This is MathGuy.com. My name is Mark Karadimos. Today we're going to take a look at secant, secant, arcs and angles. Well, uh, in order to fully describe what's in this video, uh, let's talk about the sections that are going to be presented here. So the first section is going to be an introduction and it's going to include what are secant lines. Our next section is going to be problem one, followed by problem two, followed by problem three. All right, let's take a look at the first section. All right, in this section, we are going to talk about what secant lines are. So let's look at a diagram. So secant lines are lines that intersect the circle at two locations. So we obviously have a circle here and we have two secant lines, so here's one. Now, you know, a secant line, technically all lines go on forever. So imagine this line going on forever. Okay, and again, this is another secant line. We've got a point on the circle, another point on the circle, and of course the intersection with the other secant line. Okay, so if I take away the you know, the, the, the look of a line that goes on forever and only look at the piece of that line, uh, you're going to notice that there are, um, there is an angle that's formed here by this intersection. So we have this angle, and this angle right here has two arcs within it. Okay, so you've got this arc right here, and we've got this arc right here. Okay, it turns out that there's a nice little relationship that looks like the following. All right, let's imagine we know what this arc measure is. So let's say we know that arc measure. I'm going to call it arc measure 1, or just A1. Okay, so let's say that this arc measure from this point to that point where those two secant lines uh, meet the circle, that arc measure, let's say, is arc 2, or just A2. Well, it turns out that I could use those two arcs to calculate the measure of this angle, which I'm going to mark with an X out here. Okay, the relationship I want to look at is one where we take the large arc, A2, and we subtract the small arc, A1, and if we divide that difference by 2, it turns out that that is going to be equal to our angle X. Okay, so we're going to be reusing this relationship um, and uh, throughout the three problems that are going to follow this section. Okay, so again, it's arc 2, the large arc, subtract arc 1, and then we divide by 2, and that's equal to the angle. All right, so let's use this relationship on the next three problems. All right, let's get uh, started on our problem. So I'm going to paste a diagram. All right. This problem is going to be very straightforward because I do have two arcs and I'll be able to use the relationship really quickly. So I'm going to take the large arc, 85 degrees. I'm going to subtract the small arc, 23 degrees, and then I'm going to divide that by 2. Now when I do that, I'm going to get angle X. Okay, so let's uh, subtract. So 85 minus 23 is going to be 62 degrees which I have to divide by 2, and 62 divided by 2 is 31 degrees. So therefore, angle X is 31 degrees, and that's all there is to it. All right, let's get our, to our next problem. All right, here's problem number two. Uh, this one's a little bit more complicated. Uh, I have a, was given here the center of a circle, so that would make this a central angle. Now, first of all, one relationship that we should use is that if the central angle is 75, then the arc opposite that central angle is also going to be 75 degrees. All right, now I'd like to figure out what x, y, and z are. So let's first find x. Now that I have this arc and I have this arc, the two arcs that are inside this angle x, well, I'm going to take that 75 and, and 15, and I'm going to subtract them. So x is going to be equal to 75 
minus 15 degrees all divided by 2. So when I subtract those I'm getting 60 degrees divided by 2 is 30 degrees. Alright, so now I know this angle right here is 30 degrees, so I'm going to plop that right in there. So I like to get all this into the diagram because then it's going to be easier to talk about some things. Okay. Alright, so I also know that if this angle is 75 and I've got a straight line here that these two angles, in other words this angle that's right next to the 75 degrees that angle and 75 degrees are going to add up to be 180. So therefore, that makes this 105 degrees. So 105 and 75, that makes 180. And there you go, I've got a straight angle. Okay, so now I have those two uh, angles. And matter of fact, within this large triangle here, you can see I do have a large triangle, that uh, I have two of the angles and now I can find the third because we know the sum of the internal angles of a triangle are equal to 180 degrees. So, so far, let's see what I have. I've got 30 plus 105, that makes 135. i got to figure out some number, that's why, plus 135 degrees is equal to 180 degrees. Remember, all three of those angles have a sum of 180. So I'm going to subtract 135 from both sides of this very simple equation. Very basic geometry relationship. And it looks like I'm going to get 45 degrees. That makes this angle 45 degrees. All right, great. So it looks like I'm going through this diagram and I'm getting all these angles. Um, all right, well, let's use another relationship to get Z. Now, if I look at this part of the circle, it's half the circle. All right, how do I know that? Well, if you look at this chord, the piece of the secant line here, but if this chord right here is a diameter because it goes through the center of the circle. If it is a diameter, that means that this half of the circle, the arcs that make up that half are going to have a sum of 180, right? 180 is half a circle. All right, so let's see, I've got 15 and 75. So 1575 and something's got to add up to be 180 degrees. Let's see, 15 and 75, that's, that's 90 degrees. Okay, so I've got 90 degrees plus Z is equal to 180. So if I subtract 90 from both sides, I'm getting Z is 90 degrees. Okay, so this diagram does not look very good. It's not a very good, accurate diagram when it comes to sizes, but that's why diagrams, you don't go by diagrams. This is just a diagram to help us kind of understand where things are placed in there. So it's not, things are not necessarily to scale, which is very common on tests, quizzes, and, and so forth. Okay, so I've got that arc. We're done with the problem. Let's get to our next problem. All right, here's our last problem. And this last problem has uh, an initial beginning here that's going to be fairly routine. So if you recall, if we have an angle that's met by two secant lines, we could use the arcs that are internal to that angle to form a relationship. So the relationship goes at, as this. The angle, in this case it's 10 degrees, it's equal to the difference of these two angle uh, arcs, that is, arcs A and A. The difference between them divided by 2. Okay, so that's the relationship I'm using. Uh, well, it's a proportion because I could put this over 1. So now what I'm going to do to solve this proportion is I'm going to cross multiply. So I'm going to take 2 times tw uh, 10 to get 20. And multiply 1 times the 80 minus A. There you have it. Now, without get, getting into all the algebra, I'm going to look at this intuitively and say, what subtracted from 80 is equal to 20? Well, it turns out that 80 minus 60 is equal to 20. So A has got to be 60. 
Sure, I could subtract 80 from both sides and then divide by negative 1, but this is just easier. Okay, now what I'd like to also do is solve for B and C, and I'm going to call them those arcs X. Why are they equal? Because these little tick marks say that those two arcs are equal, so I'm going to call them X. Now I'm going to need some space, so I'm going to get rid of this work. Alright, so now that the work's gone, I can have some space to play here. So, uh, you should remember that all of the arcs of a circle have to add up to be 360. So, let's see, I've got X, I've got 80, I've got X, and I've got A, and they're all equal to, oops, 360. Now, if you remember, we just solved this problem, and we found out that A is 60 degrees. All right, well, that's good news. I got a 60 degrees there. All right, so now what I like to do is add some like terms. So I've got x's to add together. x plus x is 2x. And I've got the 80 and the 60 to add together. So 80 plus 60 looks like it's 140. So you add like terms. X's with X's and numbers with numbers. All right, again, simple algebra. I'm going to subtract 140 from both sides. Shouldn't have to show this because it's fairly routine, but I'll do it just to be on the safe side. So I'm going to uh, subtract, and I'm going to get 220 to get the X alone, of course. I'm going to divide both sides by 2. All right, so what do we get? We get 110. So that means that each of these two arcs is 110 degrees. All right, so we've got all the arcs accounted for, and we're all good. So make sure you go back to mathguide.com, check out our other instructional videos, interactive quizzes, and text-based lessons. Take care.